Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, and in this video, I'm bringing you another integration services tutorial. And we're going to be looking at the lookup transformation. If you do like the video, guys, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. So, the lookup transformation it's used to join sources of data and add columns to the data flow. We can also redirect non matching rows to a different pipeline, which will become apparent when we go through some examples. The connection managers available for the lookup transformation are OLEDB. As normal, we can select from table or view or write our own SQL query. And we can also use the cache connection manager as well. Before we get started, I've come over to SQL Server Management Studio and I'm just going to discuss the scenario we're going to be going through. So we're going to be loading a very small fact table uh, within the data warehouse. Now we currently have the data in a staging table and what we want to achieve is to retrieve the salesperson ID from the dimension table to allow us to insert into that fact table. So the structure of the staging table, which is where we've got the data at the moment, is we've got a salesperson name, a value, and a payment method. The dimension table that we're going to be looking against has a salesperson ID and the full name. So what we're going to be going through in this example is we're going to be using the staging data to look up against the dimension table using the full names of the salespeople and we're going to be adding the salesperson ID to that data flow to allow us to insert into our fact table which contains uh, an ID which is just an identity for that table uh, the salesperson ID value and the payment method like I say, this is just a very small sample of data that we're going to be using here. Normally, a fact table and our dimension a fact table will be much larger, and we'd have a lot more dimension tables as well. So, I've opened up SQL Server Data Tools now, and in a package I'm using lately called uh, SSIS Tutorials. Uh, now, I've already got my connection manager set up, uh, which is a project connection manager. Uh, to the bookshop data warehouse. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag on a data flow task and then I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to drag on an OLEDB source which is going to connect to our project connection manager for the bookshop data warehouse. Now the table we're going to be using here is our staging table, uh, stage shop sales and I'll just click onto the columns tab um, as we saw before in SQL we've got the salesperson name the value and the payment method so I'm just going to click OK on that and now we're going to be dragging on a lookup so as we can see in the bottom left hand corner the description for lookup joins additional columns to the data flow we recommend this transformation when the lookup table can fit into memory which we will come on to shortly so I'm just going to drag that onto the data flow and join a data pipeline to that and double click our lookup transformation to open up the editor page now as we can see here in the middle of the page in the middle of the editor we've got our connection type so the cache connection manager or the OLE DB connection manager that we're using in this scenario. So the cache connection manager is ideal if we want to load data into our cache that's going to be used for maybe multiple lookups uh, within our packages. We'll do a separate video on that coming shortly to the channel. Um, but first of all we're going to discuss cache modes. So I've got three options full cache, partial cache or no cache. And it is important when working with the lookup transformation to know exactly what they do. So what the full cache does is it will go to the source and load all of that data 
into cache. So that's its first step, it, is it will bring all data that you've selected. So if it's a SQL query, it will run that query, load all of that into cache. If it's a table, it will load the full table into cache. So it's only ideal that you would bring in the columns that you're going to be using. So in this case, I'm going to be looking against a dimension salesperson or employee table. So if I had other columns in there, maybe uh, employee address, uh, employee date of birth, I wouldn't need those for this lookup. So it wouldn't be beneficial to me bringing those in. I'd just be wasting storage in the cache if I did that. So as I say, the full cache is going to go to the source, bring all the required data into the cache, and then it's going to perform lookups against that cache. The partial cache, now what that does is it works row by row. So it will load the first row into the cache, and then it will say, and then it will go to the table, perform the lookup, and then it will bring the next row in. Then on the next row, it will look up to the cache. If that row already exists, it will use the row stored in the cache. If not, it will go back to the source and then load that value into the cache and then perform the lookup. So you can see the difference there between full cache will only hit the source once, whereas partial cache will hit the source multiple times. And then we've got the no cache option as well. So no rows will be loaded into the cache at all. But it's always important to remember that the latest row will remain in memory. So we'll have a look at the data in more detail and go through how these different modes will work. So the example we're going through is we're going to bring in our staging data and then using that we're going to perform lookups against our dimension table, our dim sales person. If I'm using full cache mode, it's going to load that dimension table into the cache. It's going to recognize Tony Smith and then it's going to go to the cache and pull that salesperson ID. It's then going to do the same for Aaron Wilkinson and Sarah Jones. If I'm using partial cache, it's going to pull in Tony Smith from our dimension table and then our first three rows will be able to use reuse that cache. Then it's going to hit Aaron Wilkinson. When it hits Aaron Wilkinson it's going to go to the cache and say we only have Tony Smith within our cache. We need to go back to the source, load Aaron Wilkinson into our cache, then it's going to use Aaron Wilkinson from the cache then when it gets to Sarah Jones, it's going to say she's not present in the cache. We'll go back to the source, load in Sarah Jones, and then use lookups to that cache again. If I'm using no cache, what it's going to do is it's going to realize that we need to look up Tony Smith. It's going to go to the source, get Tony Smith, and perform that lookup, retrieve that salesperson ID. Now the next row is also Tony Smith and that value is still stored in memory even with Tony Smith so it's not going to go back to the source it's still going to be able to retrieve that information when it hits Aaron Wilkinson again it will need to go back to the source and then it's back to Tony Smith but at this point it has Aaron Wilkinson in memory so it needs to hit the source again because it is performing these lookups row by row What's important to note as well with cache modes and the lookup transformation is if you are lo loading a large amount of data into memory and your machine simply can't cope with that volume of data, there is no spilling with the lookup transformation. So it won't it won't write to disk or anything like that. It won't spill to temp DB. What will happen is the process will fail. So it's quite important to understand when to use different cache modes. So the full cache mode would be recommended is if you have a large amount of memory available that you can consume for this task and you have a large amount of data that you're going to be bringing in, especially with different values. So if you have a large amount of data with hundreds of different values, 
then it would be recommended to use full cache mode because you're preventing having to hit that source data over and over again. Partial cache, you may still have a large volume of data, but maybe you only have minimal distinct rows, distinct values within that data. So in that scenario, it may be easier rather than performing the full load into cache that to just load the distinct values one by one. Uh, also, no cache is if you have limited amount of memory available or you're looking at a very small table. In my example that I'm going through here, we're only looking at a very small range of values just to go through an example. So if you are looking at a table with very small amount of values, you could also use the no cache option as well. So in this example, we're going to be sticking with the full cache mode, which is the default. And we're going to be using our OLEDB connection manager to connect to our SQL Server database, in this case, our dimensions table. Now we also have the option of specify how to handle rows with no matching entries. Uh, and that's defaulted to fail component, which is not ideal. Uh, usually we wouldn't want to fail a component when we haven't found a match. So our options are to ignore the failure and just carry on as normal, redirect rows to an error output, fail component as we've discussed, or we can also redirect rows to no match output, which is ideal because maybe we can perform some other calculation on them. Maybe we want to insert them into an error table and report back that we was unable to find values for these certain amount of rows. So I'm just going to leave it to redirect rows to no match output. The next option then is to select our connection and we have the option of either using a table or view or the results of a query. Uh, and like I've mentioned, you only want to bring in the values that you need. So if you're simply, in this case, I'm just looking up a name to get the ID. But all that's within my table is a name and ID. So I don't really, I can just load the table. Um, if you have a table with many columns that are not going to be used within the lookup, then it's beneficial to write a SQL query rather than just looking at the whole table. So in this case, we're going to be using the dim salesperson. We also have the option of creating a new table as well. So if I now go on to columns, this is where we're going to be looking at performing our lookup. So what I want to do is from my staging table, I want to take my salesperson name, look up to the dimension table and match on those values and then I want to return the salesperson ID so I can insert that into my fact table. So what I'm simply going to do from my input columns is drag salesperson name across to full name. They don't have to be called the correct, the, the same column name. And then I'm going to put a tick box in my salesperson ID, which will now add this as a new column. There are some further options on advanced and error output as well to see what we want to do with any rows that can contain errors. So I'm just going to click OK on that to perform our lookup and then I'm going to drag on a destination. I'm just going to connect that to the pipeline and what you'll find is because we've selected to redirect rows to an output uh, to no match output once we drag the connection we will have an option to choose the output so in this case we're going to be using the matching set of data okay and then I can just open up my destination if it will let me set my destination as fact shop sales and then handle the mapping so we're going to be chucking away our salesperson name we no longer need that the ID is automatically generated we wanted to bring in the salesperson ID the value and the payment method which is automatically mapped for us what we could also do is drag on another destination and in this case we're going to drag from the lookup to here and it will default to lookup no match output 
and then I'm just going to create a new table I'm just going to call it no match in this scenario I do have all matching rows but as we know that's not always the case and that, that will set all the mappings for us so I've just jumped back over to SQL we'll run a query against the fact table as we can see there's no data in there at the moment I'm just going to save what I've done to these changes and I'm going to start debugging now once this has run through we've only got minimal amount of data so it executes quite quickly I'll just stop that come back to SQL and execute the query again and we can see now we've got data in our fact table with our salesperson ID the value and the payment method as required really hope you have enjoyed that video if you have got any questions relating to lookup transformations please do post them in the comments box below don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to click that notification button to be made aware of when I do upload new videos. Thanks a lot for watching.